KTN News. Get the whole story. Welcome back to News Diary. So we're having that conversation on the Anti-Corruption Economic Crimes Act. Uh, but there's a member of parliament from Barra North who wants the repeal of sections dealing with procurement officers. And I have him in studio. That is Geoffrey Ruku from Barra North. And also in studio, I have Philip Kagushia. He's a deputy director for legal services at ESCC. Thank you so much both for making time. Thanks for having us. Right, Mwishimia, let's start off with you. Let's talk about this particular bill that you seek to be amended or delete a certain particular section. What is this bill about specifically and what specific gaps uh, in the Anti-Corruption Economics Crime Act are you seeking to remove? Thank you. Uh, uh, this bill is about uh, ensuring we're able to fight uh, corruption in our country in a more efficient and effective manner. Uh, corruption has been uh, one of the big, uh, biggest problems we have been facing as a country in terms of uh, economic development, in terms of economic uh, growth. Mm -hmm. A lot of, um, uh, you know, no gains uh, in, in those two uh, fronts. And as a nation, we need to uh, sit back and uh, reflect and see we have been having this act from 2003 right. up to now, to 223, that is 20 years. What are the gains? Have we, uh, did we, uh, have we been able to achieve as a nation uh, our intention of building, uh, our, uh, you know, a just government of the people, uh, welfare society for each and every um, Kenyan. Mm -hmm. So we need to have laws which can help us fight corruption and in a more precise, mm -hmm. effective, uh, efficient manner. At the same time, right. we need also to ask ourselves, do we have laws uh, which are not in tandem with the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crime Act uh, of 2003? Um, and after going through a number of uh, statutes enacted by the parliament, uh, you realize that uh, there are some laws which, which came after 2003, which repeals uh, the act of 2003 mm -hmm. uh, of this uh, anti-corruption act. So that's why I think we need to align the anti-corruption and uh, crime act properly so that we can give our courts a more efficient and effective ways of dealing with uh, corruption cases. Because we need to finish corruption in our country. And more so, we also need to deal with economic crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, this country has faced serious economic crimes in the past and in the recent past, but none of serious economic crime has been prosecuted in our courts whereby price, price distortions of different commodities in our market, in our economy, has happened. And uh, this has been happening from 1990s up to now it is happening, even in the recent, uh, in the recent uh, past. When we talk about uh, petroleum product VAT, it was purely economic crime. When you talk about uh, coffee, and uh, tea, what has been happening the other day, all the leaders were in Meru talking about cartels in the coffee market. Those are serious economic crimes committed by people. So, so we, we need to strengthen, right. mm -hmm. we need to make our laws more efficient, effective in dealing with corruption and economic crimes. That is where I'm coming from and I'm proposing uh, to amend section 45 uh, 2B and C, uh, because if you look at uh, uh, procurement, public procurement and disposal, and asset disposal act uh, of 2015, 2015, yes, um, and if you look at uh, section 45, mm -hmm. uh, if you go to section 5 of PP. Uh, public procurement, uh, as, uh, uh, public procurement and asset disposal act. Uh, 
uh, what it talks about and what the asset and what the the anti corruption and um, crime uh, anti corruption and uh, economic crime act talks about there is a lot of conflict therein i just want to start uh, again talking to philip who is from the ethics and anti corruption commission i mean the main aim of the ESCC is to fight corruption. Do you agree with what he says? Yeah, absolutely not. In fact, uh, but yeah, I was eagerly awaiting for the honorable member right. to tell us and to tell Kenyans how this amendment is going to help the war against corruption. Now, unfortunately, he has not stuck to that script. He has said telling us things which are at the periphery. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter, this is not an amendment. Mm -hmm. It is a mutilation of the law. Right. Because they're taking away two subsections of the act without telling us what they're bringing in replacement. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for Kenyans to understand. Why do we have laws and regulations in relation to public procurement and public finance management? It is because there's public resources involved. And you put in laws and regulations to ensure there's transparency on the one hand mm -hmm. and accountability on the other hand. And we have people in public office who are presiding over public resources and they engage in projects without prior planning. They willfully and negligently and uh, without care cause projects to be commenced and as a result there is a loss of public funds. That is what we are saying. We want to hold those people responsible mm -hmm. for what they did either negligently or carelessly or willfully. There has to be a mental element. Remember we are talking about a motive. And corruption is collusive in nature. There's two people involved. They are always scheming. So we have to hold those people responsible. Now, notwithstanding my disappointment with Maheshimiwa's uh, introduction, I have to say I appreciate the fact that he has asked what are the gains. Because the gains are many, and they are there. Uh, we have been submitting our annual reports and quarterly reports to Parliament. I wish Mahesh had taken the time to look at them. He would be seeing our achievements. Uh, we have seen unprecedented numbers of high-profile prosecutions. Right now, as we speak, there are nine governors, former and sitting, who are in court. And we can take samples. If you go to Busia, governor is in court. If you go to Migori, governor is in court. You come to Kiambu, governor is in court. Nairobi, both previous governors. You go to Samburu, you go to Garissa. All these are gains. We have high-profile convictions. We have people who have been sentenced. Rebecca Nabutola was sentenced. Oswago, former IABC, was sentenced. Those are the gains, okay? And something tells me that maybe we are hitting too close to home. We have become too effective. That is why somebody is purporting to tell you we are amending the law, yet what they are doing is taking away the tools that we are using to combat corruption. And with regard to the final issue, which is about incons inconsistency mm -hmm. with the Constitution, let us be honest. If there is any inconsistency between our statute, this is the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, if there's any inconsistency between that and the Constitution, the Constitution reigns supreme. And there is an arm of government in this country which is empowered to interpret those inconsistencies. If Meheshmiwa were being honest about this, if we were having a debate in good faith, he would have filed a petition the same way Okia Mtata files petitions, takes it to the Constitutional Court, tells the court that I see an inconsistency between ASECA, that is our act, and the Constitution. And then we would have an interpretation about whether or not it is inconsistent. And finally, the Act came into force in 2003. We got a new Constitution in 2010. The truth of the matter is that the Constitution raised the threshold. That is why when you go into the Constitution, you find national values and principles. You find principles of public service. You find principles of public finance management. So the threshold is even higher. This amendment, which I'm calling a mutilation, is a step backwards get into like even the impact i want to give mashimio an opportunity to respond to that um who is currently being affected by this amendment that you actually want to put in place i'm sorry say that again. i'm saying who is currently affected by the problem that you actually want to address and just to respond to some of the things he said you know no um i've been given responsibility by the people of kenya by the fact of the the oath of office which I took when I became a member of parliament. And one of our responsibilities to come up with laws uh, which can govern our nation, which can regulate our nation, so that we can have a just uh, society. Uh, and uh, there are some ones which uh, my brother here has used, and I do want to 
go that direction. I didn't want to uh, um, behave in a manner that uh, I can demean him by using some words which can demean him. I want us to stick uh, to, the nego to the discussion uh, because if we go that route, we'll not be able to have a proper uh, debate. Uh, because I'm good at that and I don't want to take this discussion off, 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 off the trail. Um, we are not mutilating law. We are strengthening the law. And uh, if I will be able to convince the members of parliament, uh, believe it or not, the amendment will be, uh, will be affected. What we are saying is uh, anti-corruption as authority has been effective. We need to make it more effective because, for instance, what happened to Triton case? For instance, we are talking about Jet Fuel the other day. Uh, Joe Sang case, they lost in court because the pros prosecution could not be able to define the time prior planning. And many, many, many other, other, other cases. Uh, we have PPRA, Pro uh, Public Procurement uh, Regulatory Authority, which is given power, investigating powers by the Public uh, Procurement and Asset Disposal uh, Act. PPRA can be able to investigate, uh, recommend uh, to different authorities. And different authorities, in this case, I'm talking about the SEC as one of the authority, Asset Recovery Authority as one of the authority, uh, the contracting, uh, the procuring entities, those are the employers. Uh, we need to, to know why do we rule so many cases, corruption cases, in courts of law? It's because the section 45 2B and C are not precise, are fake. And any law that is fake, that is not precise, that is not exact, remember we are talking about criminal uh, prosecution. And in any criminal prosecution, you have to put uh, the suspect into the, the scene of crime. And corruption law should be precise, exact as the murder law. Why do you think it is not precise? Because section uh, 45B actually reads, willfully or carelessly fails to comply with any law or applica applicable procedures and guidelines relating to the procurement. Um, allocation, sale or disposal of property, tendering of contracts, management of funds, or incurring of expenditures. It's because... Why it's do because you think Nul, the deletion because, of this uh, particular because, section because, yes. will be effective? It's because, Nul, <clears throat> if you go to the definitions, every act of law has the first pages defining the terms which are used in that act. You realize the term carelessly is not defined. The statement prior planning is not defined. Carelessly may mean totally opposite to what it means to you. Whatever you are doing, thinking that it is careless, to me it may not be careless. So lawyers in court of law, they will argue what is careless and what is not careless from morning to evening, and the uh, suspect will escape uh, scot free. Philip, just so, coming to... So yes. what I'm trying to say, let, let, me, let, me, let me put it into perspective. All right. Um, Section 5.1 of the uh, Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act um, prescribes the administrative action which should be taken in case there are procurement irregularities. But now... You realize that, uh, for instance, Section 46.5 of uh, uh, Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act provides for internal and disciplinary action against the uh, evaluation committee for, for not to, if the evaluation committee does not comply with the uh, Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act. This is an act which was passed by Parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, anti corruption and economic crime is an act which was passed by Parliament. The two acts are contradicting each other. We need to align the two acts. You know, Noor, I'm saying this with a lot of humility. 
and when I'm very calm because I don't want to get into the route which my brother wants to. Mm. Let me that give you right. an example. Right. If today, the body, we have to be complete for us to function. If something, if the brand is not flowing properly on your right uh, side, you'll be in serious danger, even if it's flowing properly on this other right. This act we are talking about, there is asset disposal, I mean, there is an anti-corruption uh, act, there is procurement act, there is PPRA act. All these acts must be properly be stimulated. They must be in tandem. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to flow properly for there to be effective and efficient uh, prosecutions and ensuring that people who are corrupt are held accountable. But now, yes. Yes. the situation has been mm -hmm. many people have gone to court, have used this section to escape. And I've mentioned mm -hmm. a number of... I want, I want to give Philip... And I've given you an example. I want to give in Philip December, an In December, in right. December 2020, uh -huh. Joe Sang and others' case was thrown out of the court. Why? Because of section 45-2C of Anti-Corruption and Economic Crime Act. Is that true, Philip? I mean, I want to give you an opportunity to respond to that. And also, in terms of definition, do you think it's justifiable? So let me start with the prosecutions. Yeah? Uh, and uh, the DPP will confirm, the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions will confirm this. Out of the hundreds of cases which we have recommended for prosecution for various corruption offenses, mm -hmm. the conviction rate is at 63%. So for every 100 cases, in 63 of them, we secure convictions. So what Mahishmiwa is doing, he's looking for the one outlier and using that as if it is representative of everything that is happening in the war against corruption. That is not accurate. Uh, with regard to definition, let us be honest. Is it possible for a piece of legislation to define everything? Yes. It is not, let me finish. You, you had your chance. You had your chance. You had your chance. Let me just talk about it. It is not possible because you'd have to define everything. You'd have to define the meaning of the, the meaning of a. Okay, the meaning of one, the meaning of two. You cannot do that. And this is why we go to court. Okay? A case is compiled, facts are established, you compare them against the law, and you recommend charges. And those charges, those recommendations are agreed upon with the DPP. When the case goes to court, the court is an independent arbiter. It sits in the middle, the way I'm sitting between the two of you. That is where the court sits. And the court si listens to you, listens to you, and decides whether on the facts of the case and the law, the, the, there is sufficient evidence to sustain the charge. And in 63% of cases, the charges are upheld. Mm -hmm. So it is not true that we're, we're losing the war against corruption. No, no. We're securing 63 <laughs> out of 100 convictions. For every 100 cases, 63 people convicted. And I've even mentioned some of them. I'm very, I'm very disappointed with what uh, my brother is saying. Right. I sit in the Committee of Delegate and Registration in Parliament where all regulation in the Republic of Kenya, whether from ACC or from whichever ministry, they have to pass through that regulation. Yesterday, we were looking at uh, regulation on uh, um, city board, uh, trying to form um, uh, emergency, uh, I think fund, not fund, mm -hmm. uh, what we may call the storage of emergency grains and whatever for the, for the country. Let me tell you, we are insisting as a committee and as a house, as a parliament, that we must define all the terms, key terms, mm -hmm. key terms used in a regulation or is in a law must be properly and clearly defined. Otherwise, if we fail to do that, we'll be having laws which are not effective in our courts. So when my brother says that, uh, you know, let me ask uh, a, a question. How long does it take to investigate a single case? For instance, let me ask, we were talking about uh, COVID millionaires or billionaires right. in the year 2020. Many people were, were thrown out of job in uh, Kemsa. Mm -hmm. Do we have anyone, COVID billionaires who has been taken to court so far? I think that question is directed to me, isn't you know? it? No, no, <laughs> you should be the one to answer. answer. It's, it's even, a, it's even, a, it's even um, a rhetorical question. No, 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 no. Let, we, it, be, let we, it be a factual question we, because we, we're dealing with facts. Right. We, um, you know, for us to, be, to ensure courts, I mean, uh, investigation don't take uh, forever to be, 
to be done. Uh, and corruption cases don't take forever to be done. We have to amend section 245 2B and see. Because of, of time, of unfortunately, we'll have of, to of, really of the, like wrap it quickly. I just uh, yes. want why? to ask. Yes, I think, you know why? I think Mashima, you've taken me, a me. lot of time no, no, going no. around in circles without telling Kenyans, the viewers who are watching today, without telling them how removing subsection 2B and 2C is going to strengthen the fight against corruption. Because that was my what next I'm, question. What I'm telling, if this what bill I'm telling, is what passed, I'm telling Kenyans right. is that they are, we have public procurement regulatory authority which has investigative powers, which has professionals who can be able to deal with procurement issues precisely, which can investigate and recommend to authorities, including police, inclu police we are saying CID, including uh, anti-corruption authority, including asset recovery authority, including employers. Let's not have conflicting laws. We have public uh, procurement regulatory authority, which is given investigating powers yes. by Public Procurement and Asset Disposal Act. So the Let's question, use that the question so that we can be, be able to deal with corruption right. in a proper manner. Number two, it is high time we evaluate what, that, what has been happening with EACC from two or three up to now, 20, 20 years. Mark you, Noor, we have corrupt officers within ESCC, people who have been, you know, threatening Kenyans right left the center for no right. good you reason. Know, because of time, I think we need to give the opportunity to respond to that. I have to respond to this. We took a lot of time. I have to respond to this. We have to respond to this. We have to respond to two of them. So we have to respond to two of them. How come that ESCC bought where they sit at 1.5 billion Kenyan shilling? when it was valued 350 million Kenya shilling, when AACC had yes. spent 110 million Kenya shilling, taxpayers' money, which got lost uh, to buy around and do the design in current. We've given, a, you've said a lot of things, there are a lot of claims there, but I want to give him an opportunity to answer because we're really trying to understand what impact this amendment will have once it's passed, you know. Absolutely. So, Philip, over to you. And, and once again, on the impact the is wait, 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 will, become, you will become the investigative yes. uh, arm you and it will be more efficient and effective. You've had the opportunity, Moshimio. Because of time, we need him to just say his final comments, then we wrap up. The fact of the matter is, Moshimio has been unable to tell Kenyans today, live on TV, how mutilating Section 45 of the Anti-Corruption Economic Crimes Act is going to strengthen the war against corruption. All these other things he has mentioned are what we refer to as collateral attacks. And I would prefer if Mheshimiwa would have substantiated some of the things that he has said. Because if you're going to accuse ESCC officers of corruption, you might as well come with the facts. And remember, we operate in an environment where people are imposters. There are people who are walking around with fake IDs and uh, right. extorting people. We have even prosecuted them ourselves. Mm -hmm. And this is in the public domain. So it is not true. And uh, I think I will forgive Mheshimiwa because I, I believe he's a first-time MP and he was not involved when ESCC was engaged in the acquisition of that property. I have looked at Mahishimiwa's bio. He's a very astute businessman. I challenge him to go to Kilimani today and buy a parcel of land at the price that he's talking about with a building of the magnitude that we are talking about because these are factual things and they're there in the handset. The long and short of this, Fatia, as I summarize. Kindly. We have, uh, you know, in communication, we have a message and an audience. Mm -hmm. The message is the proposed amendments. Mm -hmm. And we have the audience the Kenyans who are watching. And we have the messenger today, and I'm trying really hard not to shoot the messenger. Who is going, who stands to benefit from a mutilation of the Anti-Corruption Economic Crimes Act? That is a rhetorical question. Right, thank you so much. That has been an interesting conversation. Thank you both of you. That is a Philip Kagusha. He's a Deputy Director, Legal Services, Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, ESCC. And of course, uh, on the far end there is the Member of Parliament of Barrier North, Geoffrey Ruku, on the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act amendment that he has put in Parliament. Thank you both for your time. Well, that's a wrap for News Diary. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back at 10 a.m. with the News Centre.